Hey, what's going on boys? It's Stu. Fun fact, I started playing Star Rail mainly because Branya was in the game, and uh, well, turns out there's two of them, so even better. But only one of them's playable. For now. Anyways, she's been part of my main team for the past month ever since the game came out, alongside her girlfriend, whom she's homies with. So here's a guide on how to play Branya. Branya is a 5-star Wind Harmony character. The job of Harmony characters in Star Rail is to give offensive buffs to their teammates. Each individual Harmony character brings their own kit of buffs and utility, but they all give attack buffs in some way, shape, or form, and currently Branya is the only 5-star character in this path. The TLDR of the video is this. Branya is the strongest Harmony character who can give 3 types of damage buffs, and she has the best skill in the game. In fact, I'll go so far as to say that for now, she's also the best character in the game. If you're looking for the meta of Honkai Star Rail, look no further, because you're looking at her right the hell now. Let's start with her stats. Surprisingly, it's her HP that stands out the most. At level 80, Branya has a whopping 1241 base HP. For comparison, Tingyun, who's another Harmony character that I have at level 80, only has 846 base HP. Even Branya's defense is really high at 533, again compared to Tingyun's 416. In fact, Branya's HP and defense are comparable to Natasha's, who's a healer. I know that I'm comparing a 5-star character's stats to a 4-star's, but because my main team right now is Branya, Sally, Tingyun, Natasha, and I cannot tell you how many goddamn times Tingyun gets killed first, I kind of feel obligated to. That, and it's not like we have any other 5-star Harmony characters right now, at least until, you know, Mihoyo drops Harmony MC on us. And after you add her Light Cone stats and any HP stats her relics might have, Branya should easily clear 3,000 HP and become very thick. And don't lie to me, I know you've been copping looks down at her thighs if you have her. No, seriously though, why the fuck do her thigh highs look so damn hot? It's the shading, I swear, the shading! This means that Branya is naturally very tanky, and so you don't need to babysit her anywhere near as much as the other Harmony girls, which makes me admittedly kind of sound like I'm talking about grooming girls on a dating app, but then again, I just thirsted over an anime girl's thigh highs because that's totally normal human behavior, surely. So Branya can take a hit or two and still be fine, or get hit with a couple DOTs and not make you worry about whether or not she's gonna drop dead on her next turn. Her own attack is actually not very impactful, which might come as a surprise to some of you because by now, many of you might be aware that Branya's first trace gives her guaranteed crits on her basic attack. The problem with Branya attacking with her basic is that this means she can't use her skill, because in Star Rail, your characters can either use their skill or their basic attack when it's their turn, but not both. They can only do one or the other. And because of how stacked Branya's skill is, the opportunity cost of not using her skill to use her basic attack instead is too high most of the time. So even if you do build a DPS Branya, her own damage is still going to be pretty bad, and not to mention Branya's only attack is her basic. And in Star Rail, as you may know already, skills and ults break enemy toughness better than normals, meaning that she can't break enemies as well as, you know, actual DPS characters even even other support characters can. All this to say, Branya can't make use of her crits as much as you think she would. Speaking of her skill, it's called Combat Redeployment and it's the best skill in the game, like I said before. It's a targetable skill that Branya can use on one ally and it does three things. It gets rid of one debuff from them, pulls their turn right up after Branya so they can act right after her, and increases their damage by 33 to 82.5% for one turn, scaling from levels 1 to 15. All three of these effects are insane. By now, anyone who's played Star Rail for at least more than an hour knows that every enemy and their mother can put a freaking debuff of some kind onto your characters, mainly DOTs, but also taunts, status effects like freeze, and even Kafka's domination debuff, though to some of you that's not a debuff at all. This makes debuff removers so important to have to keep debuffs that your team gets hit with under control. Most players should be using Natasha, and thank god she has a debuff cleanse of her own too, but having Branya work with Natasha in cleaning up debuffs from your team is so useful in dealing with enemies that slap you with a ton of them, especially with debuffs that you should deal with, like, you know, Kafka's Domination that I mentioned earlier. The most busted effect on Branya's skill, however, is the instant ally turnover. So far, all Harmony characters in the game have one thing that only they can do, and this is Branya's unique ability. When she uses her skill on a teammate, that teammate takes their turn immediately after, with no exceptions and no matter
matter how slow their next turn would have been. This opens up new options for you that only Branya can provide with this skill. Ideally, you want to use the skill on your DPS, obviously, since they're also getting a damage buff out of it, but you can also use this on other teammates. For example, if one of your characters is low HP and you want to heal them ASAP, you can pull up your healer's turn so that they can instantly heal that low HP teammate and keep them from dying. If you run a double harmony team, like I do, and you notice, for example, that both your Selly and Tingyun are close to their ultimates, you can have Branya pull up Tingyun's turn first, who can then use her skill to get full charge, and then immediately use her ult to then charge the rest of Selly's ult, which then lets Selly smack an enemy real quick with her buffed ult. Note that when Branya uses her skill on herself though, she doesn't pull up her own next turn for obvious reasons, and again, she doesn't do a lot of damage herself, so buffing her own damage isn't suddenly gonna, you know, change her path from harmony to, like, hunt. So, using her skill on herself doesn't accomplish much other than, like, wasting a skill point most of the time, but one notable exception, of course, is when Branya has a debuff that she needs to get rid of, like, you know, Kafka's Domination, for example, and she has to use her skill on herself. Don't use it to cleanse things like DOTs unless she's got, like, nine stacks of bleed on her or something and her HP isn't looking too good. For the most part, just leave that shit to Natasha. Besides that, though, Branya's skill is both a sequence breaker and a lifeline. It lets you get away with things that you shouldn't normally be able to. In this sense, for those of you who watched my last guide on Tingyun, it's actually quite similar to Tingyun's ultimate, except Branya has this sort of utility on a skill, which means that most of the time, a lot of the time anyway, uh, you have easier access to it. Oh, and uh, by the way, the enemy Branya who shows up on phase 2 of the Kokolia boss fight in SU6 has the exact same skill as the playable one, and yes, that means exactly exactly what you think it means. The damage buff is mostly straightforward. Because it's not a regular attack buff and it specifically buffs damage, the game treats it as a separate multiplier, which means it stacks multiplicatively with normal attack buffs and other types of damage buffs. Which leads us right into talking about our ultimate, which is called the Bellabog March. This is the perfect complement to Branya's skills damage buff because it increases her team's attack by 33-66% to 66%, and their crit damage by 12-18% to 18 of Branya's own crit damage stat, plus another 12-24% to 24 for 2 turns each. This is the single best damage support ability in the game, and it instantly turns all your DPSs into gods, with how fat of an attack buff it gives. And the crit damage buff is great for any DPS who's running a crit rate body relic. But most importantly, because the ult buffs the whole team, this means that Branya can solo support a double DPS team by herself. Compare this to the other two harmony characters in the game right now. Tingyun is a hyper carry specialist because both her skill and ultimate are a single target, but that makes her less efficient at supporting more than one DPS. Asta's skill and ultimate are both AoE, making her good at supporting multi DPS teams, but not so good at solo support or, you know, hyper carry. But because she has an AoE ult and a single target skill, Branya can easily fit into both hyper carry and multi DPS teams, making her the best harmony character in the game because of both her great buffs and team building versus versatility. While the other Harmony characters have some kind of downside that you oftentimes have to consider, Branya has no real downside. So you can toss her into literally any team, and that team will instantly be better. Her talent is Leading the Way, which advances her next action forward by 15-37.5% to after she uses her basic attack. This is, in my opinion, the weakest part of her kit, since like I said before, she's not exactly supposed to be using her own basic attacks much, but it could help Branya you get a clutch turn whenever she does have to shoot somebody in the face. And her technique is Banner of Command, which increases her team's attack by 15% for two turns at the start of the next fight that they get into. A great technique that further adds to her support kit, and one that you should always use if you can. For a simulated universe specifically, remember that it works even when you get into a fight in an occurrence or encounter event. However, it does not stack, so don't go spamming it before a fight thinking you're going to have like a 75% attack buff right out the gate. Trust me, I tried it myself, it doesn't work that way. Branya's ability leveling priority is first ultimate, and then skill, and then talent and basic. Since two of the effects on her skill, the debuff clear and instant ally turnover, aren't affected by levels and her ult's buff values are so strong, level her ultimate first, then her skill for the extra damage. 
Honestly, you can just ignore her talent and basic unless you really want to see Branya shoot people in the face all day. And for her bonus abilities, ideally you want to unlock Military Might first, and then Battlefield, and then Command. But since most of you don't have access to the last character ascension stage at the time of this video's recording anyway, you can leave Military Might for last, just unlock it as soon as it's available. Alright, time to talk about Branya's game plan now. It's actually pretty simple. Use her technique if you can before you get into a fight, spam her skill on your DPS, and then use her ultimate as soon as you get it, or when your DPS gets their ult too, so that you can combo them together. Remember to use Branya's first though. She's not entirely autopilot though, even though admittedly I've been shitting on her basic attack the whole video so far. There are times when you unironically want Branya to shoot a bitch in the face, maybe to break an enemy, or to finish off low HP mobs or even to save a skill point. The one downside of her skill is that because it's so good, you want to use it every chance you get, but that also makes Branya a pretty big skill point whore. So knowing when not to use her skill is low key almost as important as using it. And again, don't hesitate to use her skill on teammates other than your DPSs when the situation calls for it. Okay, now onto light cones. Obviously, battle isn't over is her best one. The 10% ER buff is fantastic since the more you can spam her ult, the better, especially if she's also got an ER main stat rope. And the extra skill point you get on every other ult use is great since Branya is always going to be spamming her skill anyway. But what makes this truly her light cone is the extra damage buff specifically for the ally who goes after the user. Given that Branya has the only skill in the game right now that's capable of pulling up an ally's turn right after hers, yeah, kind of a no-brainer. Also worth mentioning though is the fact that this light cone gives hella stats, a whole thousand extra health at level 70, so she gets even thicker with at least 5 C's. Hey, the more C's, the better for Branya, am I right? The good 4 star light cone options are Dance, Past and Future, and Carve the Moon. Dance is good since it gives Branya's ult an additional layer of utility in advancing the team's turns, and oftentimes this will let your teammates go before the enemies do. Past and Future is budget battle isn't over with only the damage buff, but hey, at least Branya can use the best out of all the harmony buffers. And Carve the Moon's buffs, even though they're random, are all nice to have, especially the crit damage buff since Branya's ultimate can benefit a little from that too. Memories of the past on Branya is awkward in my opinion, since this assumes you'll be using Branya more aggressively with her basics, which, again, I keep saying throughout the video, that you don't actually want to use too much with how good her skill is. Planetary Rendezvous' effect is apparently mistranslated in-game a bit, and what it actually does is give your entire team an elemental damage bonus that's the same as a user. so on Branya, she'll give your team an extra 12% wind damage bonus at S1. You can probably do some jank shit with it in Simulated Universe, for example, but honestly, from what I can tell for stuff like Forgotten Hall and MOC, unless you're running like Dunhung or Sampo or your future Blade main, I don't see this being that useful. I will say at level 80, though, Planetary does give over 1000 HP too, so it'll be nice as a stat stick at least. And for the 3 stars, I think Chorus is the best one, since it's a permanent 12% attack buff at S5 for your team. Meshing Cogs gives Branya extra energy for when she gets hit, which is nice, but it also gives extra energy when she attacks, and well, you already know what I feel about that. And Mediation is trash, don't use it. Now, for her Relics. Her best set is 4-piece Eagle, or just 4-piece Wind set, since the 4-piece effect advances her action forward by 25% when she uses her ultimate. This is like Dance's push effect, except instead of the whole team, it's just for herself, and it encourages you to use Branya's ult as soon as you get it, so that way Branya has a chance to steal a turn and go first to bring your DPS up later and let them smack an enemy before they can act. If you don't have enough wind pieces, you can just give her 4 piece musketeer as a placeholder. For main stats on relics, crit damage is the only thing Branya scales with, specifically on her ult, so it's both her dominant main stat and substat. It's so dominant, in fact, that while I'd normally recommend completing a full 4 piece relic set on support characters in Star Rail, for Branya specifically, she's an exception in that you should run her with a crit damage main stat body piece over a full relic set until you can get one that is in set. Bra 
Aranya also wants speed boots. She's quite slow herself with only a base speed of 99, since if possible you want your DPS to go first before Branya, and then use Branya's skill on them to make them go twice before the enemies can even act once. The exception to giving Branya speed boots is, if you're specifically running a fast DPS like Selly with attack percent boots or a main stat that's not speed. Because with speed boots, Branya risks outspeeding your DPS, which is not what you want, because if both Branya and and your DPS are already faster than most enemies in the first place, then most of the time, you're wasting a potential extra turn on your DPS. But if you're using a slow DPS like Hook, speed boots on Branya is no longer a problem again because as long as Branya's faster than the enemies, she can drag your DPS's turn up and let them act before the enemies do, which means you no longer have to worry about getting speed boots for your slow DPS's and run them with attack percent instead. If you are using a fast DPS with attack percent boots, though, and so you don't want to give Branya speed boots of her own, anything else is honestly fine. Branya is already quite tanky, but you can make her even tankier with HP or defense percent boots, because again, you shouldn't give a shit about her own attack. Same thing with her planars, you can run wind, attack, HP, or defense percent, whatever you want, depending on what you have and how you feel like building her. But for her link rope, you really want energy regen, so she can charge her ult faster, because, you know, her ult is really strong. Oh, and speaking of her ornament set, uh, Fleet of the Ageless is her best set since not only will the extra HP make her thick thighs even thicker, she can also give an extra 8% attack to the team if she's over 120 speed, but don't stress it if you can't make her that fast. Otherwise, run 2-piece Sprightly Von Walk, or however you say that, I don't know how to say that word. For substats, prioritize crit damage, speed, effect res, and anything else in that order. Again, speed is the weird one here since it depends on how fast or slow your DPS is, but everything else should should be pretty straightforward. And yes, I know, Branya is the one character where getting crit rate substats is actually bad. Since Branya is a 5 star and she's only obtainable from the permanent gacha, her Eidolons are going to be pretty hard to get, but I'll go over them anyway so you know what to look out for since all of them are pretty strong. Her E1 gives her a 50-50 chance that she gets a skill point back that she used on her skill, and since she's going to be spamming that shit, Branya being able to refund her own skill points at least some of the time is pretty damn nice and makes her a little less of a skill point hog. Her E2 is fantastic since it gives the ally she uses her skill on 30% extra speed for one turn so that they can act faster on their next turn after Branya pulls them up. Her E4 is actually pretty cool too. It lets her follow up attack an enemy with wind weakness if a teammate uses their own basic attack on them first. This is best used against enemies who are also weak to elements that Branya's allies have so that she can follow up attack even more. I still don't think this means that you should start stacking attack percent on your Branya even if you do have an E4 Branya, but because follow-up attacks are free actions, it does mean that she can much more actively contribute to breaking enemies, especially bosses. And finally, her E6 increases the duration of the damage buff on her skill by another turn, making it last for two turns instead. This is absolutely insane, because the game doesn't say it doesn't stack, which means it likely does, so as long as Branya keeps using her skill, your DP is now doubling up on the damage buff. In summary, Branya is the best harmony buffer in the game. She has three different offensive buffs, an attack buff and crit damage buff on her ult, and a damage buff on her skill, and her skill is the most stacked skill in the game, with the aforementioned damage buff, a debuff clear, and the unique ability to pull up any one ally's turn up right after hers. And unlike other support characters, she's very tanky, and so she doesn't need a lot of babysitting, freeing up a lot of your attention to keeping your DPS and other characters alive instead. I said it earlier in the video, and I'll say it again. She's the best character in the game for the foreseeable future, and she is the meta. At least until, you know, another 5-star and possibly better Harmony character comes out to replace her. Until then, though, when you get to pick a 5-star character from Stellar Warp Banner, you know, the 300 roll thing, uh, you should strongly consider picking up Branya if you don't have her already. Also, fuck Kakolia. I'm glad that bitch is dead and I bully her every chance I get in SU6. If you found the video informative, useful, or just downright degenerate because of my concerning focus on Branya's thighs, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for future Star Rail videos. And if there is anything I missed, feel free to share any extra Branya 
Rania info or tech down in the comments. Also, make sure to check me out over at my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash toastsniper98. I stream every day starting at anywhere between noon to 4 p.m. PST, and I usually go for at least 4 to 6 hours, so stop by if you have any further questions about Branya or Star Rail or gotchas in general, since in case you haven't noticed by now, I'm a bit of a gotcha master myself. Next video will be a guide on, who else, Silverwolf, cause if MiHoYo gives me the option to roll for an alternate universe version of my favorite character in the game, you damn well know I'm gonna do it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys over at Twitch. Peace!